All right, so the latest version of the game uh, where we last left it off is that the, um, the timer works. Once we've got one wave of creatures running around, we can start tapping them and get points. Then we get to the boss level and the timer starts to count down. Okay, so the idea of the boss level is that uh, the boss will have some hit points. If you tap it enough times, then uh, you've, you've defeated it and it'll go to the good ending. If you don't tap it enough times within X amount of time, you go to the bad ending. It's already programmed that it'll go to the bad ending uh, when the time runs out. So you have, in my case, four seconds to hit the boss enough times. So to set ourselves up for that, we will go over to the boss scene. So scene boss. And uh, we'll make the boss do stuff, maybe move around or grow bigger or something. We'll, we'll work with it. But for the moment, we'll deal with the actions uh, that, that we, the, the code that we need. So if we go over to the actions panel for the layer of the boss, Let's see what we've got so far. Uh, some imports, timers, etc. Okay, so the timer stuff is working. We'll go over to the next lines after after that boss stuff right there. Um, boss timer. That is, uh, we need to set up some like hit points for the boss. So we might make a note. Um, create hit points for the boss. Uh, so in order to keep track of hit points for the boss, uh, this is going to be a variable. VAR variable. We'll call it boss hit points. It's of type number. say um, 10. Let's say the hit points are 10. At the maximum, you have to tap it 10 times within the four seconds, within your time limit. So their hit points is a total of 10. Obviously, we can put whatever we want here. Uh, but this is showing the maximum hit points. Next, we'll say create a variable to keep track of current hits. Well, we have a maximum of 10 hit points that we're going to tap to, to get to to defeat them. We need to keep track of how many times have you hit it so far. So I tapped it twice, I'm not there yet. I tapped it eight times, I'm not there yet. I tapped it 10 times, okay, now I reached my maximum 10. It's dead. So this will be VAR boss current hits. That's also a number, capital N, that's equal to zero before we start to battle the boss, before we start to hit the boss, we have hit it zero times. Obviously, we haven't hit it yet. So the current hits that we've added to the boss is zero. Eventually, we need to get to 10 hit points, and then we've defeated it. But these are, are two variables to keep track of how many current hits until we get to the maximum hits, maximum hit points. We will say, as a quick message to us in the output panel, we'll say trace message, quotes, boss hit points, space plus uh, boss hit points. So all that this is doing is if I save it and run it, in the console, it will just confirm, when I get to the boss level, it'll just confirm the message, boss hit points, it has 10. Nothing else will happen yet, if you tap on it, nothing happens yet, we haven't programmed that. Remember the thing about programming is that it's, it's little by little, it's pieces to get you to a, a whole. So the piece of keeping track of how many hit points is just one of the things that I need to do for it to actually work. So save it and run it, just to confirm you don't have any errors. Go to the uh, de go to the debug, uh, you know, do it via debug panel, and then go to the boss level and keep an eye out down there on the trace screen. When you get to the the debug screen, when you get to the boss, 
it'll just simply say the message, boss hit points, 10. Or later on, if I wanted to make it really difficult and I put 100 right here, well, it'll say in the message as soon as that scene begins, boss hit points is 100. And then we'll program it in a moment to actually take those hits. So what I mean is if I debug it, I should see that feedback message. I should, number one, I should get no errors. If I got some errors, I might have misspelled uh, some, of my, some of my code here, so I want to fix that. If I get no errors, then I want to go to that scene and see if it's working. All right, let's see here. So that starts up. Down on my output panel, everything looks fine. I press play. I'm starting to play here. I'll tap it a few times. I did manage to get a few points there. I have two points. Okay, good. Time's running out. 10 seconds. Okay, now I'm at the boss. Obviously, if I tap the boss, nothing happens yet. But it says the boss hit points are 10. So if you see that result, you're good. If you don't see that just yet, um, let's fix that. And it's still going to run out of time. So that would take me to the bad ending. But what I want is now to make those hit points actually work. So I will end that debug session. These hit points are part of making it work. Because then now we need to add um, the ability to tap on the ghost, the boss. And when you tap on the boss, it has to check, have you reached 10 yet? So in order for us to tap on the boss, it needs to be more than just a graphic. Right now we need to convert this into a symbol so that we can give it an instance name so that we can um, actually tap on it. So I'm going to select the boss, turn it into a symbol, F8. Call it MC Boss 1. I might have more than one boss, so we give it a, an instance name. That's become a, a symbol now, so remember the general steps. Step one, you draw the thing. Step two, you turn it into a symbol. Step three, something. Step four, you write code. What's step three before we write the code? Instance name of this object, yes. So uh, this um, object right here, we need to give it an instance name. So we'll call that boss1mc. I'm going to flip it around. Boss one underscore MC. That's a one. That's the number one, not an L. So that object now has an instance name. This is like if we were creating variables within the code, this object now has an instance name to keep track of it. Back to our action script. We will write our code to pay attention to tapping this item. So boss1mc dot add event listener parentheses. I've drawn the character, I've drawn the boss, I've turned it into a symbol, I've given it an instance name. Now in the code I can refer to it. So I'm saying let's listen for something, and the something will be touch event, capital T, capital E, dot touch, underscore tap, all in capital letters, comma. So let's listen for the time that we tap on the boss to comma do something after we tap. And the something is a function, fn hit boss1. We will run a function, a series of code, 
a block of code. We will run a function whenever we tap on a particular sprite. At the end of the line there, I think it's cut off, but at the end of the line that should end in a semicolon. Yep, right there. Next line, well, we need to define what does function fn hitboss1 mean. We've done that a few times. So function parentheses colon void curly braces. We're about to define this bit of code does not exist in ActionScript. We invented it, so we have to define it. Next line, function fn hitboss1, obviously spelled exactly the same as up here. I'm trying to use some code. Here I'm trying to define the code. It should be the same. Parentheses, everyone misses, not everyone, but a lot of people miss this, even though I mention it more than once. We need to go back to the parentheses right here. This function only works when it's attached to something, and it's attached to this over here, so we need to further say, in the parentheses, event, this is lowercase event, colon touch event, just like up here. This is saying basically how can we use this function? Action script is different than other languages, perhaps like JavaScript, where you define your functions and anything can use it. Here, it's I've defined a function, but it can only be used by specifically this event that relates to touch. So people forget this a few times. Before I go on, let me point out again, don't forget to put in the parentheses event colon touch event. This right here. I'm going to break apart that curly brace to the next line down here. Now again, these are curly braces, not the, not the, um, not the parenthesis. These are curly braces. Break that apart, and then I'll make my note end of my function hit boss one. And this comment is optional, but it's just there so that I can keep track of uh, what is what is that curly brace? Who who does it belong to? All right, so this particular function is going to do a few things. It needs to increment boss current hits from 0 to 10, so that we've defeated the boss. It also needs to keep track of our general points. It also needs to show those points on screen. If I've tapped the boss enough to defeat it, it then needs to go to the good ending. So several things need to happen here, and I'll note them here. Add more points to my main score. Display those points on screen. Uh, increment or add, increment the current hits to defeat the boss. And then once we defeat the boss, go to good ending. So that's what I need to do. And I've spelled it out in a human understandable way. Now I need to write the action script code version of those things. Um, add more points to my main score. I'm keeping track of that. Let me come back to that one moment. I'm keeping track of that on current score. So it's current score plus plus. We saw that previously. Plus plus is simply add one to, um, to a variable. We've previously used the variable current score. It's a variable storing how many points we currently have. 
if I manage to tap the blue ghost 10 times, that is holding on to the value of 10. So when we tap the boss, we also get a point. We then need to increment the current hits of the boss. So that's boss current hits plus plus. We can do a little pause here to test a couple of things. Uh, so we'll do trace. Boss hits. Boss current hits. I, I, I just want to test at the moment. We haven't programmed what happens when we defeat the boss yet. But I want to confirm that as I tap the boss, I get a message down there that's telling me how many times I've tapped the boss. If I can confirm that, then I can write the code that will compare. You've hit the boss two times, you're not at the, at the dead zone yet. You've hit it eight times, not there yet. You've hit it ten times, okay, you've defeated it. But this is enough to save it and run it to confirm that tapping the boss works. We will display points on screen in a moment, and then we will have it so that if we defeat the boss, it goes to the right place in a moment. But at this point, try to save it and debug it and see if you get some feedback. Let me confirm mine, and then I'll help you if it's not quite there. So I'm running it right here. I'm going to keep an eye out in the output panel. I'm going to press play, tap a couple here. Got a few points. I see four points on screen. I see four points down there. Time is ticking to 10. Coming to the boss. I'm going to tap on the boss. Nothing happens on screen here. But down there, I'm saying I've tapped the boss a few times. I managed. It was I did do 10 hits before my time ran out. Uh, but I haven't fully programmed it to to understand that, so it still goes to the bad ending. That's normal, I haven't fully programmed it. But you should get some output there that says I've hit the boss, whatever. Let me pause right there, does that work? Anyone need a little help? Let me put my code back in here, and let me check what you've got. That's the latest code right there. Getting some right here.
All right, everyone, let's go on. If your code worked up to this point, then let's add a little bit more. All right, everyone, so let's go on. If it worked up to this point, that's very good because we have the confirmation that we are hitting it. We are getting points in the panel. If, if that works, then we can go to the next part of it here. Um, we'll do the, OK, display those points on screen. Uh, we did add more points to the main score, we incremented the current score, we'll display them on screen, then we'll do uh, go to good ending. Okay, to display it on screen, let's back up a moment here. When we were displaying points in the previous scene, back on the wave one scene, we had a box where the points would appear on screen. We don't have a text box in that uh, in that. <clears throat> particular scene to display those points. So that's one reason why it doesn't display uh, on screen. So I'm going to copy and paste a little bit, but I have to change it a little bit. If I go back to wave one and select my wave one points box, copy it. It already has the proper font or color or size, etc. I don't want to redo that. So I'm going back to wave one to copy my point box. What I will have to change, however, is the instance name. So I'll go back then to the boss wave, make a brand new layer for uh, boss timer, or boss points, that is. And in that new layer, right click, paste in place. That way, that way it gets put exactly in the same place as my previous uh, scene. Now, when you did the, when you did the uh, assignment about podcasts, remember you heard the various podcasts by Mark Rosewater and you talked about uh, 10 things every game needs. Um, there's also other concepts in there regarding you know, consistency and such. Why would the points, if it's on the left side, suddenly appear on the right side? It's going to confuse people. I want to keep seeing points or time in the same place with the same font. Um, it's cool that I can have 40 different fonts, but it confuses the users because it's suddenly different. So I just copied and pasted it to the same place. What I need to change, however, is the instance name. I'm no longer on wave one. Those points, um, that box instance name is not going to work anymore. So I'll call it boss one 
points, whatever makes sense. So instance name, boss one points. So now that box that shows the points in the boss scene has a proper instance name. And we've got a place where we can then display the points. The code to do that, I can also borrow it from the previous wave one. We had back on wave one, line 12 or so, it said in the wave one points box, display some text, whatever. I'm going to copy that line and change one thing. I'm going to copy that line from wave one and paste it into boss and change one thing because that line is, is nearly complete. I'm going to copy line 12. If your lines don't line up, the logic of it is inside of your hit ghost function, we are displaying on the screen their points. So I'm going to copy that line. I'll go then over to my boss uh, scene, and I've got current score, um, plus plus, boss current hits, I've got the trace, so I'll do after the current hits here, I'll paste, and I need to change just one thing. What do I need to change in that line? Wave to boss. It's not wave one points anymore, it's boss one points. So however you called it, however you named it in the on screen, capital B or not or whatever, whatever you named it, then it's this, the rest is the same. This is saying there's some object on the screen with some name, boss one points. We're going to set the text property to a sentence that says points and whatever their current score is. Well, we know that once we've hit the boss, we're incrementing our points still. So we've got uh, those 10 points, or 12, or whatever. OK, so now I'm going to save it and, and debug it. Now I've added the ability to display points on screen. Let me try that out. Debug that. I've confirmed that I see that I get points and I hit the boss and stuff in the console. But now let's see about getting sh sh seeing my points on screen. All right, so I'm going to play. I'm going to get a couple points. So I have a couple points on the screen here so far. I go to the boss, start to tap. I made it up to 14 points. All right, so that that line we've written before, we've used that before, but now we're reusing it. It's a new text box because it's a new scene, and now it's got that item. Question? Didn't, didn't quite do it.
because technically what we're doing is we don't display the points until line 55. So we also need to display the points when we get to this scene because it's ending up uh, so we fix that one. So it seems to be coming along pretty well. Good. Um, we've got on screen. I see that I'm getting points, but if you notice very carefully, the uh, let's say I got five points when I'm on wave one, and then when it goes to the boss, it doesn't say any points. Then I start tapping the boss. Then it goes to point six. So um, this is the example again about uh, this only does exactly what you tell it. Uh, we said on this scene right here to start to display the current points. And we have a special guest. Come on in. Yes. Would you have any use of those? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
anymore. And how about earphones? Like, you know, we have packages full of earbuds. We have, earbuds. We have, a good, we have some good earphones here, actually, but if you want to leave it out. We have a whole box full of real good ones in the office, but I mean, there's little packages of, like, cheap ones. Uh, uh, keep they're not, I'll keep them, but they're not that popular, but I'll keep them. Oh, well, you don't have to keep them. I mean, I can put them in the box out here for free. Yeah, put them for free. Uh, people are liking the good ones instead. Of them. Well, thank you. Hi, Moms. How are you doing? Hi. I can't wait to see. Victor is inviting me to come see the points. You have to uh, show me what you're doing. <laughs> nice to see you. Well, actually, you're going to step in and finish the code, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I sure. How fun. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'll come back and see you guys. You might show me your projects. Stay in touch. Goodbye. Have a good day, so, um, this line 55 is uh, doing literally, it's displaying points on screen, but not until you've actually tapped the boss at least once. So, we need to copy this line and put it before we tap the boss, because the code gets processed from top to bottom, and none of that tapping the boss happens until you tap the boss. It doesn't display the points until you tap the boss. So let's copy that line and paste it before. So it's gonna be in two places. As soon as we get to this scene, show our current points. And then when we start to tap a boss, show the current points again, because we've gotten more points. That's how we will fix it so that it doesn't be, so that's, what, that's how we'll fix it so that points is not empty when we get here. We will continue to see our current points and then as we tap the boss, we'll see more points. So the logic of that is that we never told uh, the game to display the points until we started to tap on the, the boss. Okay, so the boss, we're tapping on the boss, we're getting points, but we haven't done this final part here. Once we defeat the boss, go to the good ending. We haven't programmed that yet. We've only done those first three parts. The fourth part right here. This is a brand new concept. This is the concept of conditional statements. It sounds very fancy, but it's just making decisions. We need to write code that makes a decision. Right now, there's no decisions happening. You tap it, you get points, that's it. But now we need to write code to make a decision. When we hit the number of maximum hit points, go to the good ending. Or else, we have not hit the maximum number of hit points, so go to the bad ending. So we'll make a note. Conditional statement. To make a choice. We'll say either we have hit the boss enough or not. Two possible choices. We can make conditional statements that, that make a choice out of ten things, a thousand things, but oftentimes we make it with a couple of choices. Either this happened or it didn't. We could do this might happen, or this might happen, or not. We have as many possibilities as we can logically make. And this comes from writing code that looks like this. If, open close parentheses, open curly brace, enter, else, open curly brace, close curly brace. If, else. If something happens, do something or else it didn't happen, do something else. This is a simple way to make two decisions. Put a message here. If true, do this part of the code. If false, do this part of the code. Now the curly braces, this is, this is written differently than we've seen before and it's very specific. If parentheses, space curly brace from here to here, space else, curly brace from here to here. Again, this is a curly brace that you might lose track of. So I would put a, a, a comment here, and if else, That's just a quick note that if I lose track of it, if I've got all of that code up there and I see this, where is this coming from? Oh, that's the end of my GitHub's curly brace there. 
And so computers, um, since the first ones were invented in the 1930s, since the first general concepts of logic and computation were invented in the 1800s, uh, computers have operated basically in binary, which means two. So keyword by for two. Yes or no, up or down, zero or one. Um, so true or false. Uh, computers make decisions very, very simply. If you think about it like, uh, should I go have lunch? Well, that's a simple true or false decision. True, I am hungry. Let's go get lunch. False, I am not hungry. I won't get lunch. So many decisions can be broken down very simply into true or false. And there's more complex things. Like, should I go to class today? Well, it's not important. There's not a test. But I should go to class for my attendance. You know, there's all of these possibilities. This basic if-else asks true or false. And so what we're trying to confirm if it's true or false will happen inside of the parentheses. If I have hit the boss more than 10 times, I have defeated it. True. Go to the good ending. Or false, I have not hit the boss enough times. So keep playing. In the parentheses, we will then say, boss current hits greater than boss hit points. We have a variable. That's what we called it, right? B uh, boss current hits. Sorry, boss current hits versus boss hit points. Yeah. We have we have something keeping track of how many times we've hit it. We have something keeping track of what's the maximum. So we ask the question, if boss current hits, let's say seven, is greater than, is more than ten, we will do something. Let me ask you, is seven more than ten? Yes or no? No. No. 7 is not more than 10, false happens. If 7 is more than 10, that's not true, Jump, skip this part and go to false and do this part. Skip this code and do this code. All right, what if we hit it 11 times? Is 11 greater than 10? Yes. Yes, true. So it'll jump to this part of the code and do this part and never get to this part. So this is how it makes a decision out of two possibilities. We can have more complex possibilities, such as, did we do a number of hit points on the left arm, and then on the right arm, and then the head? OK, so now we're dealing more complex with more things to hit. There is a way to do that. We won't quite get there just yet. It's just in total. Total hit points, did we, did we do enough? And to kind of test if this is going to work, we'll put a trace message. We'll say, yes, we have hit the boss enough versus, no, we have not hit the boss enough. So two trace messages, two outputs down at the bottom to test ourselves here. And every time we hit the boss, every time we hit the boss, it'll check because all of this code is in that function. That function, everything in those curly braces of that function will run every time you hit the boss. So I hit the boss one time, and it'll say current hit points. Is one more than 10? No, and it'll say the no message every time I hit it. Is nine more than 10? No. Uh, is 10 more than 10? Yes. Nope, 10 is equal to 10. 10 is not greater than 10. 10 is equal to 10, that's a special case. So even when it gets to 10, is 10 equal to 10? 10 equal to 10 is true, but is 10 greater than 10? False. So there will be that. Uh, once we get to 11, is 11 greater than? Um, is 11 greater than 10? Yes. So it'll say the yes message. It won't move to the scenes yet. We'll do that very, very soon. I just want to confirm right now. Save it and run it. Tap the boss. Before you get to the maximum hit points, it, will, it should give you this message every time you tap it. Once you get past the hit points, it'll tell you the other message. It won't move you there yet. But let's just confirm that this works first. Go ahead and debug this. Debug, debug your code so far and see what you get.
Let me just check my code works, and then I'll help you out one moment. So let me just run that. So I should see my output happening in the debug panel, giving me some feedback. Now we're doing something a little bit more advanced, this conditional statement on the condition of this, either true or false. So let's see here, I'll play that, get a couple of points. I, I got three points. And then as soon as the next scene starts, I should have that. I tap the ghost a couple of times. No, we have not hit the boss enough. Tap it again. Nope, ran out of time. Okay, let me play that again. Get a few points. I get to the boss. This time I'll try a little harder. Yes, I have hit the boss enough. So it should show the two conditions. If the hit points is less than 10, it'll say one message. Once the hit points is more than 10, it'll say the other message. Um, so the uh, the the little the, the the trick question about is 10 greater than 10 can be fixed by doing this as greater than equals. So if you add a little equals there. So now we're saying if current boss is greater than or equal to that. If 10 is greater than or equal to, if 10 is equal to 10, okay, we hit it enough. 9 is not greater than or equal to 10, so we can get to false. By the time we get to 10, it's done. If it gets to 11, is 11 greater than 10? Yes, so trace does true. So let's confirm that works, and then we will do the final thing about making it go to the next scene.
Okay, so if the um, if the if else is working here, the final thing is to move over to the good ending. We have our code here that is paying attention to the hit points. Once we've crossed the crossed the threshold of hit points, we get a message. Well, the message is nice, but I want it to do something. So the something will be here under the the true block after that yes message. We'll say, um, just like the code we had previously, uh, where do we have an example? Right here, movie clip, go to and play, frame one of the bad ending. Well, you can just borrow that line of code and we need to change one thing. So if you scroll up a little bit higher in the current scene, in my case, line 34, I've got the code that says, take us to this other scene. I'm going to copy that line, paste it there, and change it from SC bad ending to SC good ending. And then else doesn't really need anything more. Um, you uh, you just have it as a quick check if else either this either that so we don't need anything more for else but if now has a very important line here let's basically go to and play let's move us over to scene one good ending so now when I debug this now I've got code so that when I tap the boss enough times within my time limit it should hopefully take me to my good ending um, we haven't fully made our good ending work, I think that has, I, I think that those buttons don't work on the good ending, but let's see what happens. So I'll click OK on that. I'll press play, try to get some points. I do know it works fine. Bad ending, so this time I'll try really hard to get the good ending. There we go. I went to the U win. So down at the bottom, oh, and then we need one more thing here about the timer. So once that, um, once I've tapped it enough times, I saw my message right here, boss hits is 10. Yes, you've hit the boss enough times. Ooh, I did it with two seconds to spare. Um, and then it takes me over to the you win. Good ending. I will do one more thing, then we'll take a break, then we'll uh, check your code. Uh, the other thing is that I get this scary message about cannot access property of method null. Well, uh, that has to do with the timer. The boss timer is still kind of ticking away, which it shouldn't be, because now I've moved to the good ending. I've defeated the boss. I don't need the timer to be thinking anymore. So we have one more line of code here to stop the timer. Let's see, debug end. We had boss timer start when the scene starts, and when we ran out of time, we had go to the bad ending, but also stop the timer. I also want to stop the timer if I hit the boss enough. The function we've been writing today so far, function hit boss, also needs that code to stop the timer. And I would add it before moving away. When we move away to the different scene, the object might not exist anymore, and therefore it can't keep track of time, and therefore I, I get an error message. So before we actually move away, over here we've confirmed we've hit the boss enough times. True. Quick message there. Next, stop the timer. No longer pay attention to the time because we've hit the boss enough. Then move us to the good ending. If I debug that again, I should not get that error message. The error message was complaining about the timer, which no longer existed in the other scene. And so here I turn it off before I move to the other scene by adding that stop. 
that stop there. And I'll play, get some points. I go to the boss, I get enough points. And I go, you win, no more error message. I hit the boss 10 times. Yes, you have hit the boss enough. I go to, you win. Play doesn't work or quit doesn't work but it'll be the exact same idea about the bad ending. Most likely I haven't, what's that? Uh, it'll be a little bit of copy and paste in terms of most likely these are not symbols yet. They don't have instance names yet. But then I copy the code from the bad ending to the good ending and probably just change a little bit such as their instance names. But if it worked up to this point, let's take, uh, let's take a quick break here. Uh, confirming it all works. It's 2.35, we'll be back at 2.45 if it didn't work. Let me put a copy of my code up to this point until the folder. Uh, and then we'll take a little break and then we'll figure out what issue you might have.